On today's episode, we're going to start talking about these rookies heading into the NFL. We're going to break down the quarterback position and the running back position, give you some of these guys that we really like, their film, some opportunities, where can they land. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, April 5th, another show. The Fantasy Footballers back with you, Mike Wright, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. Yes, you are. Behind the scenes, of course, Judge Giamatti. hey Al Borland is here. Please don't speak. Whatever you do, don't speak. And the Borgogan sitting back there as well, getting ready for the NFL draft, <clears throat> which is coming soon, Thursday, We're the 28th. Like a, a full gang now. It's a bit much. You remember when it was just like the three of us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The and good old And days. Brooksy. But I'm, no, I'm, I'm no. saying even before Brooksy. Yeah, it was me and a clawfus. Yeah. And uh, Mike's feet in your face. Yeah. It was, the good old days. I meant more the recording of when it was like the three of the us. The three of us. People tuned in because of the three of us. It's just, it was so much nicer because yeah. not so many distractions. Yes. Other See, people. that's what I'm talking about. I do want to say thank you for clearing up that Al should not talk. When you, when <laughs> yeah. you hit. You know, because Brooks got in with his AO, yeah. and that was a great job. But then it was like, we also have uh, Al, Al Borland here. Shut your mouth. Don't say anything. And I, I, I really appreciate yeah. that. How you doing, Al? Good <laughs> man. Good yeah. man. It's a little test. It's a good test. Um, yeah. Yeah, we got a good crew. We've got a lot of rookies to talk about over the next two shows. Uh, for the average fantasy football player, the draft is this month, right? We're into April, and this is this is the time to get your head around the big names that should be drafted with enough draft capital to make a difference in fantasy, which means that after this draft and we have some, you know, we move from pencil season to uh, permanent marker. Thank you. It's more of an erasable pen. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, to a more formidable, uh, secure idea of where these guys are going to make an impact. Then, then you see where they slide into fantasy drafts. They start, uh, you know, if you're in a dynasty league, you got rookie drafts coming up, and this is very exciting and scary because there are opportunities out there. But there are going to be surprises. There always are. And so today we're not going to make those predictions about where they're going yet. We will do those on the 28th. But we will lay the groundwork. We'll talk about today on the show the quarterbacks and the running backs who some of our favorites are, who, where some of the opportunities are. Yeah, what are the good landing spots that will make a difference if a running back, if a quarterback goes there? And, you know, and, and the reality is there are – this year is different. This year there aren't a bunch of great landing spots for running backs. There aren't good quarterbacks. You know, things like that <laughs> that are just different this year. There are both landing spots and talent – in terms of the wide receiver position. Yes, that is true. I think this is a pretty deep wide receiver class, and we'll talk about that next episode. Yeah, and we'll talk about a trade. If you guys want to get those trade terms that just took place into our news and notes, we'll talk about that as well. A reminder, the Dynasty Pass, which has team opportunity charts for everybody so you can see the best destinations for every single rookie, you can check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. You'll get the Dynasty Pass with the UDK+. Plus. You can find all of us on Twitter. The show is at the FF Ballers. Jason at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. And the communities join the foot.com. Quick question. In the draft theme here, what player is the most likely to lose value after the NFL draft? I will also ask it a different way. What player might you want to trade right now before, yes. their, va before their draft value gets destroyed? Which I like the phrasing like that because I don't, when I was looking at this question, I mean, there's, you know the what I would say are the kind of the lower hanging fruits of like, uh, like uh, MVS or Juju, like Kansas City. 
you, we would all be pretty shocked if they don't spend a day one or a day two pick on a wide receiver. So I, w I didn't want to think in terms like that. But a name that I think could surprise us with a, with a day two wide receiver pick is the Dallas Cowboys. And I know that Michael Gallup has his new fancy contract where he, you know, the five-year $57 million. But when you look at the contract, he's, he's guaranteed $27 million. And it's essentially structured like a two-year where – after the uh, after 2023, they can get out of it pretty easily if they want to. And the, the way the, why I'm bringing up Michael Gallup, not because I think he's a bad player, but the guy's coming off an ACL tear. In the he was the final game of the season, right? Am I correct? Now I was doubting myself. So at what point is he ready to go? Is he ready to go right away? I would doubt that. It would be pretty surprising. So, I mean, how many games does Michael Gallup miss? And that's one year. Like, if he misses three to four games, that's a big chunk of those two years where he's really guaranteed the money and they need help. Uh, I mean, they they shocked the world when they took CeeDee Lamb. Like, no one really was mock drafting or a uh, lamb to the Dallas Cowboys. It was a great player happened to be on the clock when they were <laughs> – picking so they took the wide receiver wouldn't shock me to see one of these big name wide receivers end up there get some footing over those first few games and then sooner than rather than later Michael Gallup becomes an expendable asset for the Dallas Cowboys yeah I got it <laughs> <laughs> dude would you like to go next Jason no, I, no, I, I just figured you have to say. I was gonna say the wide receiver I have a wide receiver as well yours is different um, I'll just throw Alan Lazard out there, the Green Bay Packers. I refuse. Um, this is, I think the headline that needs to be out there for Alan Lazard and why I would try to move him now is not that he can't contribute to the offense. It's that we know what Alan Lazard is at this point in his career. He's had four full seasons in the NFL. He's outside the 70th percentile in all of the explosiveness categories. He's huge. I mean, he's enormous. His relevance last year, I mean, he had 500 receiving yards. That's not special. He had eight touchdowns. That was special. That can repeat. I'm not saying Alan Lazard can't have eight to ten touchdowns as a wink, wink, tight end wide receiver on this team, much like the Robert Tunyon year of two years ago where he scored ten times. It's just that I don't think that he is the kind of wide receiver that this team is going to be able to lean on, develop to be a Devontae Adams or the next great outside wideout. And so I think they'll invest. I think they'll yeah. invest in in one or two. I mean, a recent mock draft had them taking two rookie wide receivers like, uh, you know, Olave and Traylon Burks in the first round. So um, it's almost impossible that Green Bay doesn't take one considering the draft capital they have. So I think Alan Lazard, unfortunately, will um, be in a more murky fantasy position, kind of battling Randall Cobb for relevance. And um, so I think he may lose it on he, draft day. He definitely will take a hit because uh, like the Kansas City Chiefs, I'll be shocked if the Packers don't go in on a wide receiver. But what's wild for the Packers, Alan Lazard was the number two target in terms of target percentage for the Green Bay Packers at 11%. Like, <laughs> Devontae Adams, 30% of the targets. What does – this team is going to be fascinating where if every everyone knows, every play, like if he can throw – if Rodgers could throw to Devontae Adams, he was going to throw it to Devontae Adams – and now you will likely have a team where there isn't a true superstar, even if they get one of the rookies. Yeah, they have to develop they that have, player. Yeah, that rookie has to hit. And we've you've seen plenty of first-round wide receivers, <laughs> Jalen Rager, do absolutely nothing for a team, and, and other people have to step up. It's a great science experiment because right, you have a Hall right. of Fame quarterback. That, you know, it's, oh, does the wide receiver help the quarterback? Does the quarterback make the wide receiver? Well, you know Aaron Rodgers is great. He should be thrown for 35 touchdowns, but he doesn't have the weapons in the receiving core. So when, Even after they trade for DK Metcalf. Oh, I was going to say Brandon Cooks, but they will <laughs> trade for someone. They, just, they might. And, and the thing is, is, Mike, when you bring up the science – or, Jason, when you bring up the science experiment – it's what this conflicting AJ Dillon looks so good in the backfield. Yes, he does. With Aaron Rodgers throws the players he trusts, and Aaron Jones is so incredibly great in the receiving game. So you talk about a thirty percent, you know, target disappearance. 
I just wonder what the train of thought's going to be about Aaron Jones and whether he's going to be undervalued because he was a perennial top five type of running back talent. And those targets have to go somewhere, and the running back is often where they go. Jones yeah. was tied overall in the season with Lazard at 11%. By yeah, the way. That That's going to go up. <laughs> it's going to be wild. Uh, the player that I think could lose the most, I don't think this is the most likely to lose, but he would lose the most value, would be Devin Singletary, the darling of the end of the year last year. I've seen people in leagues I'm in trade for Devin Singletary in Dynasty in hopes that he just continues what he did at the end of the year as the dude, which he should have been the dude a long time ago because it's him and Zach Moss. And so, obviously, he should have been the dude. Right. Um, but the, the the reality is here, I think this is a great offense who still could benefit from a really good day two running back. Can and we, if they were to draft a Brees Hall, a Kenneth Walker in the second round, I think Devin Singletary all of a sudden goes from this, you know, it, it's it's like this hopeful he's going to roll last year's success into next year into like, oh, he was a he was a great thing for a month. Can we keep a list of who Jason declares that he hates on this show? Because right now it's all the rookie quarterbacks mm -hmm. and Zach Moss. And I just want to continue the list throughout the remainder of the show. Absolutely. To be fair, should. Zach Moss has been on that list oh, since for years. Before he was drafted because he's <laughs> awful. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, uh, he's probably a great no offense. guy. No offense. You couldn't even say <laughs> no, no offense. No, I was going to say There's no offense. There's no way you could have said that. It was pretty offensive. You should have said offense. Yeah, but offense. <laughs> All righty, let's. Uh, there are some other names uh, that are worth mentioning. Obviously, Sam Darnold could disappear into oblivion. No, I've I've heard from the rumor mill he's on track. <laughs> the quarterback they just traded for and extended has to be mentioned as on track to be the starter. Yeah, well, Ooh. there's there's thoughts within the organization that you know at 24 years old he he's going to turn the corner. I mean, does not. I'm not joking about that. That's the actual thing. Uh, other names, Rondale Moore of Arizona. You know, right now, Arizona has DeAndre Hopkins and then three short wide receivers, Rondale Moore, Andy Isabella. They need another body, whether it's A.J. Green coming back or them trading for somebody. Or They've got, they just picked up Steven Anderson, the tight end. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay. They're making moves. Yeah, and, and so that's another name <laughs> that could be impacted. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Do you want to add Steve Kime to your list today, Jason? Oh, yeah. Let's put him on there. Yeah, just because he sucks. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, no, no. At, at his, being a general manager you got of an NFL franchise. Just because he's Jason's bad at that. in a different place Gasoline today. running through the veins Shut up, today. Gasoline. <laughs> you're just... Uh, Goodness gracious. Yeah, you're at the extremes of language here. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We got a lot of show left. Is what are it, your thoughts on Bruce Arians retiring? I I think it was a really cool move. Uh, instead of allowing Todd Bowles to take over a Hall of Fameless you know quarterback situation as the head coach next year, he gets to allow Todd Bowles, who I think is a very good uh, coach, he got jobbed by the Jets. You know Tampa Bay is winning games. Like yeah. you could get rid of the head coach, Tampa Bay will win some games in that division with Tom Brady. So I think it's pretty cool um, that Todd Bowles gets to inherit success to start his second tenure as a head coach. Um, and really, they already had an offensive coordinator, a good one. and His name Tom, was Tom Brady? Well, sure, and <laughs> Tom Brady. But, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think that the Bucks miss too much here. Yeah, I don't think anything in the offense changes because you have that established system. Patriots. Traded for wide receiver Devontae Parker from the Dolphins. Mike, what was your reaction to this trade? Do you have some hopes and dreams for Parker in New England? I I thought it was a great trade for both teams. It was a real easy, I know, a, a fifth for a third uh, Swapsky. Oh, the third, but the third is uh, next year. Is that confirmed? That's what I see. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we have that right. Uh, but the, the the first thing was like, that's that's a fascinating trade of they were willing to send a wide receiver away in the division. And, you know, Parker's 29. He missed, still missed a lot of time with injury. He, yeah, over the last couple of years he has. But he still has a real manageable contract for a good player. And it's like if you look at the wide receivers who will be there 
in the third for the New England Patriots, they won't they aren't likely to be as good as Devontae Parker is right now. So I thought it was a great trade for them. And it you know, also could be a little bit of you you go after the guy who has destroyed your team and Devontae Parker has had some massive games uh against the Patriots. Is he immediately your highest value wideout? Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers, Nelson Aguilar. Those are really the only other three names on that team if at they, wide receiver. Nikhil if, Harry will be gone. Yeah, if they keep Bourne as a like a kind of a bit player where he's like a fifty percent snap guy, then yeah, Parker would jump to the top. Last year Jacoby Myers eighty eighty four percent of snaps. Yeah. Aguilar sixty four percent born 52%. Obviously have both of the tight ends there. Yeah, I I think that Myers will stay in a very similar role to what he had as kind of that possession guy, but now you have a big play uh player out there. It, this is really important for Mac Jones's development and hopefully Mac can take a a, a big step forward. Does Parker hurt Hunter Henry who potentially was like a touchdown a game. Parker I believe was the number 1 uh, in terms of contested, like no, yeah, tight no separation catches. Yep. Yeah, the Saints and Eagles made a trade. The headline there: the Eagles no longer have both the 16th and 19th pick in this year's draft. They have the 18th, and they'll get a first rounder back for next year from the Saints. A bunch of other picks. Yeah, but does it change your view of whether the Eagles go wide receiver or not? That was, that was my first thought was simply that, you know, with three first-round picks, the Eagles had constantly been mocked a first-round wide receiver. Getting rid of the one of those makes it obviously less likely that they do that, more likely that the Saints could, or at 16-19 and 19 with this quarterback draft class, That's they, what it's for. they could now be – they have more ammunition to either take one that falls – or more ammunition to trade up if there's one that they specifically like. So this gets them two picks now ahead of the Steelers, who are one of those teams in the mix for a, for a quarterback as well. The Texans have signed Marlon Mack. Okie dokie. <laughs> because only Marlon Mack would fit the uh, Rex Burkhead, Royce Freeman, Dare Agumbawale uh, situation there. And yes, the Texans are a good opportunity landing spot for running backs because of the names you just read. They've also received multiple calls on Brandon Cooks, 28 years old, final year of the deal. It makes a lot of sense to move him. He was very not gruntled. Okay, He was very disgruntled when the team uh, decided to move Mark Ingram last year. So you heard a lot of chirps from Brandon Cooks at that point. I, so, I think a deal gets done. Um, I, I think that Brandon Cooks will be moved. I have to imagine someone like the Packers are one of the teams reaching out. And it, I, I also think it's in his contract that like two years is pretty much as long as he'll stay with it. Right, team. right, right. Yeah. He lo he's going to break the record for he's most got, uh, teams the, the trading wanderlust. for him. Yeah, it's not – he he doesn't change as a free agent. He just gets traded from team to team. Saints, Patriots, Rams, Texans. Who's next? DK Metcalf, trade rumors around DK Metcalf Ooh, as well. Man, uh, even had some news about teams reaching out to see if Terry McLaurin was available. Both yes. those players going into their final year of the rookie deal. And uh, shout out to Frank Gore. Mm. Oh, he is dude. infinite. Frank Gore. I mean, he is all. What an incredible career. Uh, we won't have the full Hall of Fame debate, but do you guys have him in? Yeah. I just yeah. it's it's the debate that went on on Twitter, and he to me is a lock. Like I don't understand how you wouldn't put that longevity into the Hall of Fame. Twelve seasons. Yeah, at at running back, it's unique and different. It's different to me than a quarterback that can play a decade. Kyle, so, do you have him in the Hall of Fame? Would he be in there for you? Yeah, he's in. Okay, he's the well, now third, settled third most rushing yards of all time. Yeah, yeah, he's a lock. I Plus would, the durability, the I would longevity. Hope so. I would hope so. Um, uh, certainly not on the grounds of his uh, boxing match, but otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Any other news breaking, gentlemen? Anything we need to talk about before we move forward? Nah. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll jump into the rookies. All right, Dynasty players on pins and needles for the upcoming rookie class. We're going to talk quarterbacks. We're going to talk running backs. Break it all down. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. 
All right, like I said, draft day predictions will be coming later this month. As you saw from the Eagle Saints trade, lots of change can happen. A lot of the odds of who's going where are going to change. But if you want to dig deeper than even this show, you can jump into the Dynasty Pass, the rookie rankings, production profiles. All those details are in there uh, and on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Starting at quarterback, let's begin with Malik Willis. Mike has a... I was just chuckling it because the court... The quarterback class is, uh, they're not impressive, especially coming off of last year's what felt like we had some real, real candidates who could come in and be franchise quarterbacks. You know, uh, Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett seemed to be at the top. But then I saw uh, uh, there was a, a mock draft today that put Desmond Ritter as the first quarterback off the board. And you go watch, you're like, yeah, he's as good as the other guys. <laughs> yeah, these guys yeah, he's just as good as these guys. And it's it's so difficult because this has happened several times before. I mean, we've had the Blaine Gabbert, Christian Ponder seasons where, look, he, here's some facts that we know. We know that quarterback there's going to be quarterbacks in the first round mm -hmm. because there it's too important of a position for somebody to not take a chance on the players being graded as the highest quality at that position. But that doesn't mean that all of these guys from this year – wouldn't have fallen much further down the list compared right. to last year's quarterbacks. I mean, I think it's very safe to say Justin Fields is it was a better prospect than any of the quarterbacks entering this draft. Easily, yeah. I mean, this reminds me of 2013 where you just didn't have great prospects, and that's why E.J. Manuel was a first-round first draft yeah. pick, and Geno Smith <laughs> fell to the second, and – it it just you know oh, Mike Glennon Gino. they're just what they're just weren't great options now it, it could be similar to 2014 where you've got some later you know some second round guys because I I think it's a little it's deeper like the quality of most of these quarterbacks to me it goes like the same tier there's like six or seven like more so someone in the second or third round could become a a Jimmy Garoppolo type of career here. Um, but yeah, there there is no superstar here. No teams are clamoring to get, um, you know, to fight over one another to get the the next great quarterback. And you know, we were talking in the studio. If I was a GM, like if I'm the Falcons GM, I need a quarterback. I can get one. I'm not taking one. I'm right. I'm waiting and grabbing a great one in 2023. So Malik Willis, I think, does represent the highest potential. Yes. Simply because of his dual threat ability, escapability, being able to rush the football. You know what that value is. Comes out of Liberty, 6'1", 215, almost 23 years old. And I think the consensus is that he's likely the first quarterback to go. Um, we know how rushing ability is gold in fantasy. But there's weaknesses to his game as well, right? Yeah, for sure. He is not accurate. Um <laughs> He's so he's okay. He's got, he actually he's okay. has he has a good deep ball. He really does. Like I I I think that he's got a a nice placement on his deep ball, but all the other throws he's not very accurate. There's also some other red flags, right? Like he's a fifth year senior, not an early declare type of guy. Had and to it, transfer out of Auburn. Had to transfer out. Played less competition, and he's not a Josh Allen like Josh Allen is the reason we can hope for Malik Willis because Josh Allen turned into a top three NFL quarterback because he figured out the accuracy and got it together. But Josh Allen had more arm strength. Josh Allen, you know, was not 6'1", 215. Josh Allen's a tank. A tank. So um, now his rushing ability is outstanding. Yeah. Um, you know, he's someone that could go to the NFL and put up 800 rushing yards. So for fantasy purposes, I'm in on Malik Willis. I don't know if he will develop to becoming, you know, a really long-term successful NFL quarterback. There's definitely a group of folks that think a redshirt season for him at the NFL level is going to be important to continue to develop. When I was uh, looking at him, accuracy was obviously an issue, but also being calm in the pocket and being able to make, you know, make that decision not to dip the eyes and take off immediately. You know, you saw Trey Lance with the draft capital he was drafted with still sit out at full season 
there could be some comparisons there. But Mike, when you see Malik Willis, is there a destination? Is there a place you think he could go and that might be the best fit to uh, represent dynasty value for players? I, I mean, it's the for me, it is the team he's being mocked to, which is the Pittsburgh Steelers, because Tomlin is an elite coach. If he drops that far in the NFL draft, like if he actually makes it past the Saints, which he could be okay for the Saints too, but uh, but I like the established coaching tree of, of Mike Tomlin. And if he falls to 20, I feel like the the pressure of we have to force this guy in, it's not nearly as strong, and you can then you know just let – Have a bridge have, here. Yeah, have, have Mitch Trubisky be a bridge year quarterback, work on Malik Willis. I think the, the stat that stands out to me that tells you everything you need to know about the quarterbacks is Malik Willis, who which – electric on the ground basically averaged 900 rushing yards as a starter and double digit rushing touchdowns both those years but of these of this crop of quarterbacks when it comes to intermediate passes which it's a pretty important uh, area of the field to throw to he has the worst adjusted adjusted completion percentage in the class and he is expected or by by some not everyone but at least the Vegas odds has him as the first quarterback taken and he has the worst accuracy in intermediate uh, portions of the field. That's just that's such a wild place to be for the quarterback position. It certainly doesn't scream day one starter franchise quarterback as much as it does some development. Let's talk about Kenny Pickett, who unfortunately Kenny for him. Kenny Pickett? <laughs> he can pick it. No? Wait, is that what is that supposed to be? Uh, can y'all dig it? With a little oh, loop, there it is. Oh, okay. It took me a minute to get there. I don't know if we were doing a bop it thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, well, look, I was going to say he's he's been the unfortunate uh, player associated with the small hands mm -hmm, situation. Mm -hmm. Jack Doyle retires. Kenny Pickett is here. But I kind of like him. Yeah, he's, yeah he's okay. <laughs> I know, but there's there's some... You know, when you saw the massive jump from the junior season to to last year, you know, you saw him end up with a 42 to 7 touchdown to interception ratio. Maybe that's just me thinking about that Joe Burrow season. You know, Joe Burrow went from 16 touchdowns to just setting the world on fire. Uh so huge improvements, big arm talent. Um I think that I think that he is the other guy that you look at and say Right system, right team. You could develop this player. He's yeah. he's my favorite quarterback of of this year's group. Uh, I would take him off the list of the quarterbacks I hate. I, everyone else, pr pretty much. I'm <laughs> now. Uh, what are your thoughts on him, though? In, What's the word to describe your feelings towards him? If if hate is everything else, uh, is it neutrality or is it somewhere in the the, the better? It's be it's better than neutral. I I think he's good. Not so for fantasy purposes. He can move. He can scramble. He can get out of the pocket and run and pick up a first down. But he doesn't project as someone who's going to truly be a dual threat in the NFL. So for fantasy, as more of a pocket passer, um, I think his ceiling is a little bit capped. But he did look like a quarterback that had good poise, uh, who could throw those intermediate, very important NFL uh, routes. He. He kind of checked a lot of the boxes. He's a little bit older, but he has he's played a lot. So, um and, and, you know, he he did well with Pitt. Pitt won games because of him. So I I like Kenny Pickett. Um he's got tiny hands. <laughs> I also I'm looking think, at this this picture of our uh, rookie quarterbacks on and I'm trying to decide if somebody like maybe shrunk the hands a little bit. It, you would think, but that's a real photograph. Mm -hmm. He's just got small hands. I do think there's a good chance for him to end up as the first quarterback drafted because of Carolina, there's a lot of ties um, to Matt Rule, to the ownership. Um, he likes to take a lot of sacks, which is something Darnold does. So oof, they like that there Not in as Carolina. many as Malik. <laughs> Malik was sack king. I was a little worried about, and I guess, you know, I don't know if Justin Herbert gets criticized for this or Josh Allen used to. felt like there not a lot of touch on, on some of the throws that he made, which is kind of just one of those – uh, quarterback skill art things that happen. Certain quarterbacks just do it better than others. That was one of my concerns, but massive production certainly. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, are no, you? Are you? I'm. I'm with you that the jump of almost doubling your yardage, absolutely doubling your touchdowns, and your yards per attempt goes from seven point two up to eight point seven. So it's it's not that he was just 
you know, getting dinking and dunking. Like he's getting after it. So I thirteen to nine in twenty twenty was his touchdown to interception yeah. ratio. Went to forty two to seven. I like that. My my comp for him was Derek Carr. I'm I'm seeing the okay. comp in here as Derek Carr. So is that the peak of this agree? class, Derek Carr? Yes, just like twenty fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. 2014 was so jo Johnny was Manziel, there. Blake Bortles, oh, Teddy Bridgewater, Derek Carr, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. So Carr is definitely the best of that class. Yep. All right, Matt Corral. What What were your thoughts on Matt Corral? Because I I see some good in what I was able to. Yeah, he throws I mean, I, the ball stupid. <laughs> 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 I just can't stand the way he throws the ball. You now, just to be, had, we just oh, had this conversation, oh, and I was telling you, I gosh. thought it was he's more of a three quarter throw, and you, you were you were saying it looks like he's almost shot putting it. Yeah, he like doesn't pull the ball back. He just he has it by his shoulder, and then just throws it. And that being said, Philip Rivers that's, also that's, threw the ball very stupid, and he was great. That's so, my quick release note that right. I have for Matt Corral. Yeah, it's, it's a shortcut to a quick release. Don't pull he the ball the way the back. Ball stupid. He throws the ball so <laughs> stupid. I can't stand watching him. Like The film just oh, makes me man. upset. Um, I'm. It's way better than the guys that have like the, like the, the Bortles loop. Short. Where, no, obviously. Where they try and like scratch the ball on the ground and they bring it up over their head. <laughs> there is an advantage. I'll take the shot put. To, it's the Desmond Ritter loop as well. Yeah, there's an advantage to not, you know, having to sling the ball the way back, but it looks stupid. Um, outside of that, he is, um, you know, he's a little bit older. Um, most of these guys. A little bit smaller, too, than people would, would a, like. Absolutely. Six foot, 200 pounds older he's just I don't think he's there was nothing that I watched that was like that's who I would want as my quarterback this is who I this is how I see him succeeding so I'm I'm just like out yeah you're that's, out on the I'm, I'm out on the golden corral wow that's a surprise I know I know right <laughs> right you'd think have you ever said that in your life I, have, no no I mean I've said that at the end <laughs> I've said like oh I'm man out. I'm out wheel me out of here <laughs> I'm I'm tapped out, um, but I think Golden Corral's a good comp. Did you did, <laughs> did you see anything, Mike, that made you think this was more uh, more than a backup? He could take over a franchise, and better yet, give some fantasy value. I I thought I thought he was a you know he's a competitor, which I like from the position, and he's also somebody that I thought was willing to do that. Uh, the Peyton Manning, right? Take a sack instead of throw a disgusting interception, but. Uh, he's too small. Yeah, and and he's not really. I mean, he's an okay runner, right? I think he was in the five hundred, six hundred yard yeah. range. Mm -hmm. But like, he's he's also because of the size, he's a dangerous runner. Like, there's injury concerns with something like that. Um, Mike, I guess the last name I'd bring up is Desmond Ritter, be, just because of that mock draft mm -hmm. with him surprisingly going ahead of every other quarterback. Yeah, he looks okay. He looks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll throw out Sam Howell. He's 21 years old. Has throw a him cannon, out. <laughs> and then that's all I'll say about him. Oh, yeah, please um, stop talking about these quarterbacks. Let's talk running backs. <laughs> yeah, let's move on and spend more time on a uh, a position that is more likely to give fantasy value immediately for fantasy players. The running back position. Why do I say that? Because at least two, at least two running backs, rookie running backs, have finished in the top 24 over the last decade. Without yep. a single failed year. Every year, at least two, up to five, two years ago. <laughs> yeah, the volume went up mm -hmm. right there. Well, Last year, Najee, Javante did it. The year before, like you said, it was Jonathan Taylor, James Robinson was a surprise, Antonio Gibson, DeAndre Swift, Clyde. So what we traditionally see is rookie fantasy impact at running back. The top teams, in terms of opportunity, this was one of the problems. There aren't a lot of like slam dunk spots. Like last year, it's oh, like we, we all knew that Pittsburgh and Najee, they were going to come together. We knew that that was going to be a great opportunity. This year, it's a little bit more questionable. Part of it is like Houston seems to be one that jumps out. It's an A-plus opportunity in a C-plus offense at best. You know, it's a great opportunity to to have volume, but I mean, I just don't know whether somebody walks in there and gives you, I mean, I guess James Robinson's the example, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you hope. You hope you get somebody like Brees Hall that lands in Houston and gets 
a billion carries, is involved in the passing game, and that could happen. But it's still Houston, and yeah. that division is is rough. I, I think I would prefer the New York Jets. I, I know that they've got Michael Carter, and he showed some flashes of being decent. So I, I don't think that they're going to press the issue. But if one of the top two backs fell to them, I think that they would draft him. And I believe that they would su supplant Michael Carter. And the Jets, to me, at least have – like, they were bad. They were a C-minus offense. But they have enough glitz and glam there to be like – they could take that leap. If Zach Wilson, you know, really takes uh, that sophomore step forward, I, I think that the Jets could be a good offense. Buffalo would be my favorite just because it, we know it's a great offense. Right. Um, and then Atlanta would be another Houston-esque, like bad team, bad offense, but plenty of opportunity. Yeah, I know it's Buff Buffalo is the better offense, but you know that there will be some shared work there from a team that's threatening to make the Super Bowl – Trust in a rookie. We This is one really important headline that I, I want to remind people about. You are not just looking at whether this guy can run the football. You are looking at whether they can pass protect. Mm -hmm. If you want to see them out on the field, being a three down back, playing in a high fantasy value reception uh, down, these guys have to be able to do that well to earn the trust, especially of a team that's competing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that hard to let a guy get his feet wet in Houston and just kind of figure it all out at once, and ah, he might struggle. But I think in Buffalo, I don't think if, if Brees Hall went to Buffalo, I don't think he walks in as a three-down back from day one. He is my love child. I love <laughs> Brees Hall, but he is not the best pass blocker. That would be one of his weaknesses that, that I saw. The, the way that he blocks is not going to fly in the NFL. Um, I, I do really love him, but... It, Buffalo, you know, if you're talking dynasty, not redraft. Sure. Devin Singletary is on the last year of his deal. So, I, you know, maybe it takes a year to really get all the way into, you know, being a workhorse. But I do think that, you know, you might need to bite the bullet and say, okay, I don't have the – maybe he's not a top 24 guy this year, but he could be a top five guy going forward. And you also see that the injuries is usually what turns into the opportunity for these younger guys. Uh, I think that Philadelphia is very interesting for either Brees or for Kenneth Walker because I, do, I don't see either of those guys as first-round picks, maybe maybe second-rounders in the middle to the back, but like the Philadelphia Eagles have an extra third-round pick mm -hmm. now, and you have Miles Sanders who – is he on the last year of his contract? It's got to be real soon. Uh, they they have a strong offensive line, so I I think that the 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 Eagles landing spot would be better once you shake off of the the initial you see the name drafted filled off and you go oh but Miles Sanders is there like he is John, the last like, year of his contract. John, thank you, Jonathan Taylor going to the Colts. When that happened, it was like oh, but Marlon Mack is there, and I know Mack got injured and that fast forwarded some things, but the situation around it of elite run blocking offensive line solid organization knowing that Jonathan Taylor is going to take over like don't overlook though like don't just so be be so short term of week 1 i need my guy to be week 1 like maybe it's week 6 right, but the, just look at look at the landing spots as a whole that before you freak out yeah i mean like the denver situation is a pretty Right. Interesting one where Melvin Gordon is obviously paid to be there and be the guy, but you know the future is Javante. I didn't even introduce him, but the number the number one name, the most do it all running back, uh, is Brees Hall. Six one two twenty. Uh was a, a player with massive amounts of volume at the collegiate level. He's a touchdown monster. Um I think he's got the skills to be a three down option, which is something that you look for because you know, some of these guys, size-wise, they don't profile to they they profile to be part of a committee. So I need him to play bigger, though. Like my yeah. my biggest knock on Brees was when you see because if you fi fire up Brees Hall highlights, you're going to see him on the goal line over and over and over, but you're going to see him barely getting in. And I'm like, dude, if you're 220, you should be enforcing the law on the goal line, just absolutely stealing souls and. 
He's and, not and a parading he's, through. That's the yeah, reason he's not, he's a, not a first round draft pick. He's yeah. not a pile pusher. He's right. not one of those guys where he should for, be. Yeah, he should be at two hundred and twenty pounds. He yeah. reminded me a lot of David Johnson in in that way, like a sure. big guy who. I mean, I saw David Johnson push pop. I've seen Brees push pop, but that's not like their forte. Yeah, they, yeah. You get him in space and watch the Jets just turn on. Brees checks almost every box for me. He's super young. He's only 20 years old right now. Um, he dominated at age 18. Uh, one of the most sticky stats, it's kind of it's weird. I don't know if this just be is because it affects draft capital, but for running backs to have success in their first three years for fantasy is actually t rushing touchdowns in the collegiate level. And just about nobody did what Brees Hall did. You know, he broke rushing touchdown records. Um, so, you know, he's got the speed four three nine at 220. He can get to the outside edge and he caught the ball. So he is yeah. He basically is not a perfect prospect, but no. he is someone I absolutely love. I'd be happy to take him with the one on one, and I'm just, I'm just, you know, lighting candles for his draft spot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a little bit like quarterbacks, though, at the running back position this year, where you don't have somebody who you none of us can say here and guarantee he's a second round draft pick. And if the right. first running back off the board is a third-round draft pick. There are just going to be question marks around it. I would say when I watched Brees play, I was concerned about hesitancy in the backfield. I was concerned about the fact that um, he's not shifty in the backfield in terms of evading like a run blitz or something like that. I'm not worried about him getting out in open space. Like When he's there, he's going to do special stuff with it. But if you're a third-round draft pick, you are far from a guarantee to yeah, take the ball on day one. And so... That's my biggest my biggest concern is just not knowing where he's going yet. And, you know, you didn't have that concern with Christian McCaffrey or Saquon Barkley or Ezekiel Elliott or Melvin Gordon in the first round. You were kind of in on them as prospects regardless of the destination. And I guess I am less that way. Yeah, uh, according to Grinding the Mocks, which kind of takes all the different mock drafts out there and looks at how a prospect is doing, uh, the average draft position is pick 40, so that would be a second rounder. However... Since the combine where he dominated, it has definitely spiked up. So um, he's been higher than that of late in mocks, which obviously know nothing. All right. Uh, do you is Buffalo preferred to you? You said versus Houston. Yeah, I would prefer Buffalo. I think I would also prefer Philly to Houston. Houston is great for year one, but I think right. longevity. If we're talking dynasty. I, I want him to go to a better franchise. Let's talk about Kenneth Walker the third. Uh, don't call him Kenny. It's Kenneth Walker. 5'10", 210, uh, 5'10", 210 for Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Um, compact runner. Really strong. Doesn't fumble. I think he's got like one fumble at the collegiate level. Um, not great against the Blitz. Another uh, issue for Kenneth Walker. If you, if you look at him coming in and establishing three down skill set, not good against the blitz. Uh, not used a ton in the passing game. Not used at all. Yeah, like that. Uh, Kenneth uh, K Dubs. Oh yeah. So K, if I can't call him Kenny, K Dubs. Uh, his biggest red flag in the production profile is his complete and total lack of receiving prowess. But nineteen receptions across three years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and on top of he did. I mean, he transferred from Wake to to Michigan State, uh, Wake Forest. But so he's not going to play so, third down. Yeah, if, if he can't if he can't blit, right. blitz block and he can't catch the but ball. But I was going to say him at the combine which I know it's it's better to have the tape but some teams just don't scheme things of throwing the ball to the running back and it's that is not his fault but he didn't look like a like a fish out of water in in the receiving drills he looked like he had he was smooth enough that he could get that job done. Yeah, I mean, I that's what I wanted a, to bring. It didn't look like Jordan Howard. That's what, yeah, or Ronald Jones. Right. Or these guys who weren't using the passing game, and you heard uh, they struggle at that. Kenneth Walker, I'm just saying it now because I truly believe it. He can catch the ball. Uh, he I did not so use it at all. I went back and watched. I, I saw a uh, – it was a massive highlight tape from his high school – um, film, uh, and he was a pass catching back. Like he, and then you watch, you watch the few receptions he had. He, uh, you know, he's hauling in one handers. He's smooth. I think he can do it. Michigan State just doesn't use the running back in that way. And so now that's a projection. This could easily be something where he comes in, 
and you should right now project him as a first and second down back, not as a third down back. Dam Damian Harris is a good comparison. Absolutely. Almost identical size, first and second down back, and you're not relying on Walker to come in and, and pass block. But I, do, but I do think that the players like Le'Veon Bell, like Melvin Gordon, these, these great NFL pass-catching backs that were at programs where they didn't utilize them and they didn't catch the ball much in college, I think that that is what Kenneth Walker the third is. I think he can come in and actually be a three-down back and catch the ball, but that is, that is a leap. That is not um, what is obvious there, so... TBD. What we do know is that he did great at the combine, four three eight at two ten. Uh, so he projects to have the athletic profile to succeed on the NFL field. Anything to add there, Mike? Just an uh, elite dominator score, uh, like off the charts. Which dominator is like a, a combination of uh, of yards and, and team total touchdowns. I mean, he's just he's elite. Yeah, percentage of team yards and touchdowns over forty percent is excellent. Uh, Brees is at 43.9%. Kenneth Walker's at 50.2%. Let's talk about Isaiah Spiller. Um, the kind of groundswell for Isaiah Spiller has uh, gone away over the last couple of months. Uh, this is still a player that I, I think, based purely on his skill set, has the highest potential ceiling of any of the running backs, including Brees Hall. I still believe that. Blasphemy. <laughs> um, if you go and watch his tape from 2020, he was much better than 2021 because he had a much, much better offensive line at Texas A&M. And so you got to see some of the things that he did well. He had an extremely young breakout age of just 18.1 years old. Um, he's very solid at every level. Some pe people consider him solid everywhere, master of none type of player. Um, but I think Isaiah Spiller, the problem is going to be drafts. It's going to be draft capital yeah. because it, I can believe all these things about a player. And then if he's a fourth round draft pick, it doesn't really matter. So um, if he's a surprise, I guess, I guess my point is if he's a surprise and he goes in the third round or he jumps Kenneth Walker because a team sees that potential that I'm talking about, then you've got an opportunity. Pre-combine, I liked Isaiah Spiller more than Kenneth Walker. Combine kind of shifted that for me because... Is that because uh, Spiller didn't run it? Uh, well, right. Spiller, what was he dealing with? An uh, ankle or I something? Don't I, I, don't, I don't remember the specifics, but yes. Um, at his pro day, I think he was 4 six. Um, Isaiah Spiller, and the the reality is his film is really good. I think his I, I really like Isaiah Spiller. I love his pass catching ability, and he's two hundred and fifteen pounds and twenty years old. So those are a lot of really important check boxes. If his athletic profile is deemed good enough by NFL teams and he's drafted high, I'm all in on him. He is the scariest to me. Like. You know, I'm I'm watching where Brees goes because I'm madly in love with Brees, but probably the most important player for draft capital and the range of outcomes on the future of their career is Isaiah Spiller because he's someone that could drop pretty far, um, you know, based on his athletic testing and his pro day and that type of stuff, which based on the film, he shouldn't. He is a really good back. He's he, my three. It was a strained abductor muscle oh, is what he – and. I'm torn on Spiller. He's got the the frame is there, the pass catching ability, uh, but like his tape to me when I'm watching him, his speed matches how he tested. Some like you have players where you, you I can't believe that Ky. Well, I don't know if we're gonna talk Kyron Williams or or not, but like I can't believe he tested so slow. He looked fast. Like Spiller to me looks. It, it looks slow, and it, it's it's in terms of like being an elite NFL player. And straight line speed is definitely not everything. You don't have to be the fastest guy in the world, but he to me looks like someone who, if if he gets through a hole, he's still gonna get caught like fifteen or twenty yards down the field, and just and that changes how an NFL team will view him, which. Hopefully, it, or hopefully not. Does it turn into a day three pick? Yeah, the draft capital is going to be huge. I mean, Kareem Hunt is a good comp. I like that. I saw that in here from Kyle. Uh, he was also a player that didn't seem like the. I mean, the, right, the Kareem Hunt Kareem's, top speed didn't come in at, uh, the at, way he, he was what four, four six or four, something six two I believe. And yet on the field, which is how I I view Spiller He's, on the field, he was he was clocked as one of the fastest 
fastest collegiate players in miles per hour on some of his breakaway runs. I think it's one of those things. You say the same thing about Traylon Burks pulling away from people. Right. You know, is it the pads? I don't know what it is. But Kareem Hunt, man, when he took that first pass from Alex Smith to the house, you were like, oh, all those other numbers don't matter. Yeah, I I, comp I am more with Andy on this. I, I didn't see Isaiah Spiller looking slow on film to me. I thought he was – there was really nothing I didn't like about his film. He maybe wasn't as strong as I wanted, but – Fumbles. Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. That, that, okay, Which, there, that's a problem. That is, that is real. Um. But after that combine, man, his, you know, the grinding the mocks uh, draft stock chart is, it, it's just a cliff. Uh, right now, he's, his expected draft position is 79.2. Um, still a third rounder. Yeah, which if he goes in the third, I'm, I'm interested, very interested and happy because he's, I think he's a good player. Who and, would you, yeah, yeah, I, I do too. And, and that's interesting to know that his, his mock draft status is still, hanging around the third round even after not being able to participate due to injury and so this is where there's a huge tear break okay that that, that was gonna be my next question and by the way the one silver lining for some of these running backs going later is that you could end up on much better teams sure so i mean kareem hunt was an example of that in previous drafts Re who's the next guy up for you Jason, if there's a big tear break here between Spiller, Walker, and Brees, and then the rest, yeah, I mean, you've it, got you know Rashad White. It used to be Kyron Williams, film wise, at his size and speed, it, it doesn't project He's well. Like, I, I think Tyler, died. I think Tyler Algier. <laughs> it's so sad. Tyler Algier, yeah, is, out of is BYU, someone, yeah, out of BYU. He's 220 pounds. He can catch the ball. Ran a four six. Um, you know, I, I he's probably my next guy up, and then Rashad White after that. And you have Rashad White ahead of like uh, Zamir White or James Cook in terms of a prospect. Yeah, I mean James Cook is very interesting to me. Uh, Dalvin's brother. Uh, he is a little bit smaller, projects to be more of a pass catching guy. Um, but I, I I do like both those guys. It's really from this point forward. There's a ton of names, and I don't think anyone has truly separated from anyone else. So when I'm looking at these prospects, I'm looking for a body type and speed that I know works at the NFL level who can catch the ball. Like That's what matters to me once you're past guys who you think are day two picks, and that's what the rest of these guys are. Do you think um, Tyler Beatty has an opportunity in the passing game to land someplace and contribute early? He's fascinating uh, because his – his production profile from his his senior year there is like off the charts. You're talking like fifty four receptions. It's, it's is that right? It is green across the board. Yes, uh, I mean it's heavily involved in all aspects of the offense. Sixteen hundred rushing yards. It's like a little just dart out of, shot out of a blowgun, and <laughs> I mean like like he 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 tested at four four five. He just he looks really quick when especially coming out of a, a, like a wheel route or so he's really really smooth uh when it comes to pass catching and accelerating immediately but five eight under 200 pounds little duke johnson yeah it, it feels like uh uh kenneth gainwell where you can really love this prospect and then the nfl that's the worst part of this the worst part of this season mm -hmm. is you start watching these players like i I think that the, I like this player's story. The, their production profile is great. Yeah, they're a little undersized, and, and then you start falling in love with these prospects. And then the Get your heart broken. And then the NFL says, <laughs> uh, "No, we don't, we're not even going to draft Alex Barnes. He's not oh. worthy of a seventh round pick." Like, and he wasn't. You're like, what? Ah, oh, man. I, I think the Duke Johnson comp, a Geo Bernard sure. comp, T Tyler Beatty could very well have a long career because of his capability as a as a as a pass catcher yeah, even though he's Hines small he's, career arc yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. these guys aren't going to dominate and be a top 10 running back on a full season uh but there's a there's definitely a place for someone with his talent in the NFL and so he's he is he's interesting I don't usually find myself drafting those guys who are like I think he'll have a longer career of m most weeks being meaningless Rashad White had 43 43 receptions yes in his uh Last season at Arizona State, had 1,000 yards on the ground on just 182 carries. Older, 23.3 years old, was a transfer. Um, His career is almost done. 
<laughs> running backs. It's so sad. Yeah. Do you, do you think that there's potential for him to leapfrog any of the top three in the draft? Absolutely. Um, I, I think, well, no, no, no. I'm sorry. The top three? No. I don't think he's going to leapfrog maybe Isaiah Spiller, but I, I would still be surprised. I well, think, if he goes in the third, I guess, are you more Yeah, I mean, intrigued? that's it's it's he could be the next guy drafted at 210 pounds who can catch the ball, um, you know, 448 speed. Um, I liked Rashad White. Uh, I, I don't know if it's – I don't know if I've got an anti-Arizona State bias, but I think I do. I think you have an anti kalen Balaj bias. That that because really the math checks out. I mean, that's really the only significant. I mean, that's a he was a fourth round pick though, right? Kalen Balaj. Sounds I mean, right. It, it, these guys, if you're if you're drafting Arizona State running backs in the fifth, seventh, fourth, yeah, I wouldn't expect anything from them either. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah it, round four. It really is with with this group. It's going to be a matter of landing spot. I mean, we we can talk about the strengths of all of them. Um you know, he was using the passing game, uh, good size, good vision. I think he's another name worth mentioning here because of the possibility to be – he could be somebody's darling. I think he has enough of the qualities to be one team's running back darling, surprise us. Maybe some team is out on Isaiah Spiller and they say, you know what, Rashad White is going to be our Clyde Edwards-Alaire and we're going to surprise the world and take him over somebody else. Yeah, I mean, and that's what it's going to come down to, Foot Clan. When, when you're looking at um, who's going to be good, just – Scout them. Get get. Don't put your heart completely on the line, and oh, then wait yeah. and see where they go. The draft capital matters as much as the landing spot, but you put those two together, and that's pretty much the answer to most of our questions. I, I would also don't write out, the love letter yet. No, yeah. no, no, no. Don't write. Not even in pencil, because then then your heart is on the line. Yeah, I might like you. That's the best you can do right now. Oh, absolutely! You just you put a list. You up. might be the one. You put a list up of crushes. It's just a crush right oh, now. Oh, it's a You're crush not list. Your heart broke over a crush, but when you when you really fall for someone, that's yeah. a problem. Okay. Um, Brian well, Robinson Jr. You do when they run a four six five at under two hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, you, oh, <laughs> you can fall out quick quicker oh. than the draft, Kyron. Oh, sound the siren for Kyron. He's over. We all liked Kyron's film, it, right? It, it yes. made no sense. People are. People just slipping off him like he's covered. What if in he's a Crisco? bad starter? What if he can't get off the line? Okay, right. What's yeah. his time from the ten yard line <laughs> through the <laughs> from the ten foot mark uh, on? No, I know it's it's when you see that. I guess my sympathies go out to all these players because you spent your entire career. He had a wonderful career at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. He made dynamic play after dynamic play. And then you are essentially, you are drilled down into a metric, one metric. And if you don't deliver twice <laughs> at the combine and at the pro day, you have, yeah. your, your life's changed. Oh, you're not good at track? Well, well you can't play in the NFL. It's, it's not it does just feel that, that way. It's, yeah. it's when you're his size, you, you got to be fast. Yeah. Yeah. Or it just doesn't work. Well, I'm so excited. We'll we'll leave it there. Those are the big names that you need to know about at the quarterback and running back position. We're going to move on to wide receivers and tight ends, pretty much wide receivers, on the next episode of the show. And I cannot wait to break down those big names. I want to know who your guys' favorites are um, to maybe emerge. And we've seen so – I mean, look, Jamar Chase last year was a great example. Jefferson the year before of the incredible year, but – even Devontae Smith, right? A lot of attention didn't go to Devontae Smith because of Jamar Chase, but he had a very good rookie year. A lot of these players can make quick contributions, and I don't think we've ever had the matchup of opportunity and quarterback like we have this year. The landing spots are juicy. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, these are opportunities. I saw the Chargers mock drafted to take a wide receiver in the first round today. Justin Herbert could get matched up with somebody. There are a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. First-round draft pick could go to Arizona. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to talk about these wide receivers, and we're going to do that on Thursday. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe if you're on Apple. Click that plus. And uh, we'll be back with the second half of our rookie preview show. Jason might just love somebody. <laughs> I might. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.